The Congressional Budget Office just came out with a hair-raising report on the budget deficit, saying it could grow to about $1 trillion by 2020. Could a deficit that big depress an economy that's been growing steadily under President Trump? Let's ask famed economist Art Laffrey. He was one of the geniuses behind the Reagan economic miracle of the 1980s, and we're happy to have him here. Art, uh, we did hear a lot of the same kind of talk in the 1980s when Ronald Reagan came out with his tax cut. That, oh, my God, what is this going to do to the deficit? The deficit did grow because of the grow, growth in, in military expenditures, which is what's happening right now. But we also had this economic boom. Yeah, we did. In fact, uh, I, I really wouldn't take the CBO numbers terribly seriously. I mean, I think they've always underestimated growth and uh, what the growth will do with regard to revenues. Uh, but the budget that was just passed, David, as you said many times, it's a it was a hair-raising budget they passed, way too much spending. Yeah. And there, there's no control of the spending. But the tax cuts, I think, if you, if you look back at, at history as our guide, I think you're going to find the tax cuts will work very nicely, growth will increase, and that will work to lower the deficit not to increase it. Now, you and I have talked in the past about how it's not the, the deficit itself that's as important as the deficit as a percent of the economy as a whole. Uh, you know, if you could, if you have a big deficit, it can look horrible, but if it creates because sure. it's tax, you have these extraordinary, I mean, look at what it was in 2009. You had 9.9% of GDP as the deficit, yeah. $1.4 trillion in spending. But that's when the economy wasn't growing at all. So then it was a problem, right? Yeah, well, let me just say that Kennedy put it very clearly. He said deficits to overconsume are, are not very good at all, but deficits to create growth and jobs and output are wonderful. And what you really want to do is looking at the deficit is not look at the dollar number, although the dollar number is important. What you want to look at is the deficit or the national debt relative to GDP. But even more so, what you want to do is look at the debt versus total wealth. Now, you want to compare a stock with a stock in this right. case. And, you know, we've had a huge increase in total wealth. Now, I'm, I'm worried about this market tapering off and coming down so sharply, but this is one day. Uh, by 2020, I think we're going to have a much, much higher stock market, much more wealth in this country. I would hope, unless someone does something to ruin the prosperity. You know, uh, Art, but one of the economic failures of the Obama administration was the fact that they, they were always complaining about the, the, the disparity between the richest and the poorest, but that disparity increased when they raised taxes and increased. Yes. I mean, you know, it's extraordinary that that happened. Now we have an unusual situation where the top 20 percent of, of the, the wealthiest people in America are going to pay 87 percent. No, that's the wrong one. The top 20 percent of wage earners are going to be paying 87 percent of the total amount of income tax. I mean, that's an extraordinary divergence, and that shows that something's distorted, right? Yeah, it sure does. I mean, what you really want to have is a low-rate, broad-based flat tax, just like Jerry Brown proposed, and everyone pays his and her fair share of the whole total amount. And when you try to put all the bills on the highest income group, you're going to get them trying to evade, avoid, and otherwise not report taxable income, uh, which is what Trump has done is lowered taxes to get that evasion, avoidance, and all those shelters and things will start disappearing. And I think it'll be very good for the economy and very good for tax collections in due course. Now, let's put up the other graph, because one of the great things about what happened during the Reagan administration when you were there is that everybody did better. Of course, you had a, a reduction yes. in all tax rates from the, from the wealthiest people down to the poorest people. They all paid less. And look what happened. The poorest 20 percent, their income increased by about 12 percent, and the richest 20 percent in, increased by about 12 percent. So all boats did rise as a <laughs> yes, result of did. those tax cuts across the board. Isn't we haven't amazing? had across the board tax cuts yet with uh, with Donald Trump. But this is very good. Now, but let's us not demean this one. This is a very, very good tax cut that he's done. Remember, we did the ones at the 1986 one, which is the second tax bill, which I expect Donald Trump to do another tax bill. With Larry Kudlow working in there and getting right. this, we could get a great tax bill coming out as the second one, and I expect that to be the one that really knocks it out of the park. But this one's great, and no one should diminish this tax cut. It'll lead to prosperity and growth, and I think lower deficits, to be honest with you. I think CBO's wrong on this. But tax cuts part two will include a lowering a dramatic lowering of that top rate, I suspect. And broadening no? the base, David. Yeah. You've got to broaden the base, lower the rate, right. and make it so that everyone pays for their fair share of total taxes. Yeah. That's all. And perhaps all income groups could get a boost in their, in their income. Well, of course, that's the dream, is all rising tide raises all yeah. boats. 
And you know, it's it's really true. You know, no one's better off when they pull someone else down, David, and everyone's better off whenever anyone's better off. That's the, the Kennedy model, and that's when he used the next line, the rising tide raises all yep. boats. And we just got to live by that model. Art Laffer, great to see you, Art. David, Thank you great very to much see for being you. here. Thank Appreciate you. it.